Early in the morning. Early in the morning. It's only one. Can you do something for me? Anyway, I'm in good spirits. What's going on, people? Then it's your boy, Cam Topical Juice, and we're back again with another episode. Episode eight of Love Is Blind. I don't really want this episode to be too long because I've got quite a lot of things to do, so I've got to go get ready. So let's get straight into this episode, guys. Like the video for me, hit the bell to be notified for me. Please press that subscribe button, roll to 50k. You done know the done know. Merchandise description below. Yeah, my thing's a bit messy still. Don't watch that dropping hair, bare food on my thing. But anyway, cool. So the episode starts with Bliss accepting Zach's proposal. Obviously, as I said in yesterday's episode, I, I wanted her to say no and string him on a little bit longer. But I, I, we knew she was gonna say yes. In fact, I think everything I predicted since episode one, I've actually got kind of, kind of, kind of spot on. Still, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make some further bold predictions by the end of this episode as well, especially with um, that toxic, ah, oh, that toxic bish, Jackie. She ain't staying with Marshmallow. She's gonna go back to Josh, I reckon. Hundo, Hundo. She's going back to Josh still. Anyway, so yeah, he, she accepts the proposal, and yeah, they look cute together on that boat. They were having a night, you know, when they're leaning their heads on each other and all that kissy, and you know, it was nice. It was nice. It was a nice scene. I feel like they, they look good together. But according to the preview, I don't think her dad's very happy about this. But anyway, we'll see how that transpires in the next few days. So it's Maca's turn to introduce Paul to her family now, right? And her dad's called Paul as well, and they had a little good banter there. Oh, Paul, Paul. Nice to meet you, Paul. <laughs> Cheers, Paul. <laughs> How you doing, Paul? Yeah, I'm good, Paul. Anyway, the dad's obviously a little bit shocked. She says that she, they've got engaged, and she just expl explains how that whole experiment works. And they're talking about kids and all this stuff. And this whole scene, I was just thinking... This whole experiment is proper nuts on the parents, like, because obviously, as far as they're concerned, they they don't know what Love is Blind is, do you know what I'm saying? They don't know what Love is Blind is, they barely know what Netflix is probably, do you know what I'm saying? And, and the next thing they know, their, their daughter's gone off somewhere, come back, and she's engaged. It's a proper surreal, it's a proper surreal, like, thing, in it? It's quite, like, so you can tell, I, I almost feel bad for the parents, because it's kind of like, if, so, if my kid dropped that on me, I, 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 I wouldn't lie, I wouldn't fake for the camera, I'd be like, I don't know how I feel about this. Mosh and Jackie. There's a few donuts of the day here today, guys. There's a real, there's a lot of candidates. Josh could be could be a donut of the day for being a weird, sloppy, snaky drunk weirdo, proper weirdo that Josh is. He's a weirdo, bro, fully. Jackie could be donut of the day. In fact, they could be a donut. They could just open up a bakery together because both of them, them donuts deserve each other. I'm gonna give half a donut to Jackie right now for this for this entire scene, right? They have an argument. We obviously didn't get, we didn't get to see the start of the argument. It, we we enter the argument as it's already kind of happened or it's happening and she's packing her bags and all this stuff and this girl is so toxic guys this girl is so toxic uh, is sickening and marshmallow knows it he knows that he they, she's, she wants that kind of toxic love hyper aggressive and hyper kind of argumentative but also a passionate and you know what I'm saying That's, it, it, there's no sustainability in that he's basically explaining how it's bleak with him and Jackie and she basically says you need to be more aggressive the word aggressive that's not really sitting right with me obviously she's talking about like the bedroom for example like she wants someone to stick it on her like he wants marshmallow to stick it on her and get her in the mood and this that, and the other but bruh that definitely works both ways. She wants him to be assertive, and we've said this the whole time, he's not manly enough for her. He's not manly enough for her. But really and truly, he's actually too manly for her. She wants the stereotypical, generic, fake alpha manly. But what he is, he is a man. He is a man that wants to take care of his own, and he cares. Now, me and Marshall are very different people, but I can appreciate someone, like, I can appreciate him, you know what I'm saying? I can appreciate him, I think, He's, he, he don't deserve what Jackie's doing to him. And she's literally saying, yeah. She goes, be more aggressive. We don't have sex, bro. We don't have sex, bro. You think my gal can call me bro? Are you mad? Nah, 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 we ain't doing that. We ain't doing all this, we don't have sex, bro. It's been like two weeks. This sounds like something that you should be arguing with your wife about in 10 years time, 15 years time, not two weeks in. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 it's mad. And he goes, she goes, you're never aggressive. I'm like, what the, what kind of man do you want? And he goes, and he goes, he, he does like that. And she goes, and then she goes, then again, this is how you know the girl's a lunatic. She's actually a lunatic. She goes, who are you clapping at, bro? So on the, on the one hand, she wants someone who's assertive. But on the other hand, she doesn't want him to be assertive because she knows deep down that's not who it is. So it's like, she's almost getting mad that someone as soft and not manly like him is now being assertive. So it's kind of like, who are you talking to now? So it's like, what do you want? You, what you want, you don't want him to be more assertive. You want a completely different man who's assertive and kind of dominant at his core. Do you understand? So 
he then pipes up and tests her, and she fails the test. She goes, no, you're coping that, bro. So, what do you want then? You know what I'm saying? What do you actually want, you freak? Anyway, she's just like, yeah, boss up, boss up. Stop being such a grandpa. Nah, she's toxic, man. She's very, very toxic. And he even explains that like, I'm the one rubbing up on you. I'm the one who's always kissing you. You've done nothing to make me feel seduced. And then he kind of goes, he, he kind of says the word project. He says, I saw you as a project. Obviously, that's not the right thing to say. I'm not going to lie, but I understand what he means when he says it. Now, she's like, again, once again, project, project. Oh, yeah, cool. She, she boots off, starts kicking off. Rah, rah, rah. Project, cool, starts packing her stuff. I'm leaving, this, that, and the other. F you, F you. And then he says, listen, I see you as limitless potential. I see you as someone I can uplift and empower. This is what adulthood is, having the tough, com tough conversations that we don't want to have. That is what adult adulthood is. Adulthood is. And this girl literally, yeah, bursts into tears. She walks up to him, starts crying, and hugs him and says, I didn't mean to hurt you, I'm sorry. This girl is the definition of toxicity, bro. This is, this is her dream relationship, just being uh, arguing, fighting, beefing, then crying, then making love. Or having that hot, steamy, aggress aggressive post-argument sex. You know what I'm saying? That's what she wants. Brett and Tiff, they move on. They're, they're talking about their marriage and she asks him, like, why doesn't it scare you? And he basically is so confident and comfortable because he has her, you know what I'm saying? He sees a future with her and I don't think, he doesn't really feel no pressure. I think it's just easy with her. And yeah, he ain't really feeling rushed. And she basically talks about how her grandfather actually proposed to his wife six weeks after getting to know them and then they stay, they stay together for like 60 years or something. So that's the story there. And he believes they're gonna make it. Now, Zach and Bliss, she's actually moved in with him now. And he's talking about how he wants to start a law firm, but while he's, huh, boy, as I said, I wouldn't trust him to be my lawyer. But, he wants to start a law firm and then he's going to get married in two weeks and all these things. There's quite a lot going on. And she basically brings to him what I was hoping she was going to bring to him in terms of making him wait a little bit, making him you know, drown a little bit, you know, get, get, keep him on edge. But she basically says, listen, I'm not going to lie, like I'm still battling my pride and ego because you know, a, a part of me still feels hurt that I was second best. Now, she's got every right to feel like that 100% because he did pick someone else. Um, and he kind of gets a little bit defensive and they end up having a little bit of a tiff about it, a little bit of a bickering. But he does make a valid point. Second best or settling would only really apply if he wanted someone else. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a fair point because he actually doesn't want that girl no more. He doesn't like, he doesn't, yeah, he, yeah, he made the wrong choice. I stand up, he made the wrong choice and he's a mug for that. So he, he does need to choke and drown for that. But he does make a fair point. It's not like Kwame. Kwame, Kwame is literally settling with a girl he does not want to settle with because his first choice is gone. So he's really settling and that is second choice. But this is the first choice, but he just made the wrong first choice, if that makes sense, you get it? So, but still, she's right to feel like that and I've got, I don't blame her for feeling like that at all. That's not a problem for me. Now, Kwame and Chelsea, again, his dead hairline and they're just talking about, they're just washing the dog and he's just, eh, 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 eh. you can just tell with it, Chelsea, yeah, I like Chelsea as a person. But you can, you can just, the desperation on her reeks. Like it really, it really, really does. And girls like that, cause you don't really see that in men. You don't see, a, you, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a man that's like the, the male version of Chelsea. Yeah, of course men exist like that, but you usually associate a Chelsea with women. You know what I'm saying? And she just reeks of desperation. She's so desperate to have kids ASAP. So she's not an old mom and I get it, but you can't plan these things. You can't rush these things. I mean, her, she, she's, She's so desperate she's gone on a game show, you know what I'm saying? She's so desperate she's gone on a reality TV show. And I feel like she, that desperation really seeps through. And I can imagine someone like Kwame, who, as he said, he wants to travel, he wants to have an experience with his girl. That's overwhelming for him. And I don't actually blame him for that because I want I, I want to do the same thing. I actually want to be moving abroad and have experiences before I settle down with anyone. So I understand that. But you can just tell she's so desperate to, to be married and desperate. Like you can tell every little scene and talking about the kids and the, and, the, and the preview in the next episode about her wearing the dress. This is the dress that I'm going to wear like in my way. She's so, it, like, you know what I'm saying? She just needs to chill out a little bit and just let the world, if, 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 if the world, you can't plan the world. There's no blueprint for life. You just have to ride and hope that you, it, it ends up the way you want it because you can't force these things. Otherwise, it's just not going to work out the way you want it. You're, you're going to be in a marriage that don't last long and you'll divorce. You might have a toxic relationship with the kids or whatever. It could be anything. Like, you just don't rush these things. They'll happen when it happens. You know what I'm saying? But they end up having a bit of an, a bit of an argument because she's, you know, that's what he explains that. And she's like, you do want to settle down, isn't it? Like, cause he, she's planning his life. And that's overwhelming. He, she's planning it all. Okay, we're going to be married in two weeks. I want kids no more than three years and all that. Everything's, everything's very planned. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Everything's very structured. That's not how life goes, man. It really ain't. And he basically says that I feel like I'm compromising quite a lot. I'm moving to Seattle. It's a different lifestyle, this, that, and the other. 
So maybe he's not as ma as ready as he thinks he is, to be honest. But, but do you know how many? If I had a pound for every single time Chelsea said, "Welcome to marriage, babe. This is marriage, babe. <laughs> this is marriage." Like she she's literally said it in every episode at some point. She went, Welcome to marriage, babe. Like how the hell would you know what marriage is like? You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't first you ain't even married yet. Micah and Paul meet Micah's friends. In fact, this is the third donor. I could I could give. I'm actually gonna give Josh Josh donut the day, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm gonna split my donuttery betwixt the three of them. Jackie can get part donut. Josh can get donut the day, but part donut. And Micah's bitch of a friend Shelby can get a slice of um of, of a donut as well. You know what I'm saying? A piece of donut. This cow was so rude. Now, I've got no problem with how Paul reacted. So what happened was here. Micah introduced Paul to her friends, and her friends. I mean, the first friend was like, okay, you know, grilled him a little bit, but nothing too much. And this Shelby girl is a weirdo. She's like, oh, she had, she had a whole weird attitude with him and a weird energy. She basically insulted him. I think she insulted the way he spoke or the science, because he, he's articulate. And she was just calling it a bit weird. It was a, it was a very strange encounter. And she, she did not make a good first impression of herself. Here's Micah saying, oh, my friends matter the most. If my friends don't like you, it's a problem. Bruh, what about Paul not liking your friends? Because genuinely, that Shelby girl was just nasty. Genuinely, she was nasty. She, she, I think she might be a lesbian as well. I think she might fancy Mac or something. Because I don't mind her not giving her blessing as a friend. But who are you? Like, why, why does he have to jump through hoops to impress you? You are nobody. You are the friend. Forget side dish. You're not even on the plate. Do you understand? You, you ain't in the picture. Shut up, innit? Do you understand? It was, it was a weird one. So she's basically being rude to him. Being the, the weird energy. And he basically goes... And, she, and I think Micah says, some, Micah says something like, oh, don't worry, she can be a little bit bitchy or something like that. And he goes, yeah, I don't really care. And she goes, don't, like, don't say that. She's a bit taken aback because only her and her friends can be bitchy, right? And he goes, yeah, I don't care. And she goes, don't, don't say that. He goes, but I don't, innit? And I, I like that from Paul. I rate that. Like, I, I really rate that because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have taken that personally. I would be like, no, no, I really appreciate that you're looking out for your friend. I really love that, but don't grill me like a cheese sandwich. You understand? Like, I'll, I'm here for my car. Respectfully, I'm not here to impress you. That's, that's, that's why I'm doing it. And if she, if she then pipes up, I'll make her feel small. I'll minimize her stature. You understand? And he then goes to the toilet because the whole thing's awkward. And then Micah's friend here basically just starts crying, saying, one of the friends says, yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm fine for you to do your thing. And Shelby's like, no, no. Like, you deserve the world. You deserve the best. And this isn't it. This ain't it. He ain't it. And I'm like, what do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you know? It sounds like, it literally sounds like you want to marry Michael, you weirdo. Like, honestly, her friend was proper, proper trash. I'll be honest, I'm not surprised that that's Michael's friends in it. Because look at the friend, look at the friend that she, look at the girl she befriended there, Irina. You can tell Michael's got just bitchy friends in it. They're, they're just, that, they're that type of clique. They're that type of girl group. Now, all the groups meet up here to celebrate Chelsea's birthday. And this drunken clown, Josh, rocks up, basically. Bliss walks in with Zach. Josh rocks up. Marshmallow comes in alone because they had a falling out, obviously. And he doesn't know where they stand. And they're all having conversations at this party. Different people, different chats. Kwame's having conversations with uh, Tiffany about their lives being different and having to compromise and just things like that. Having to heart to hearts or whatever. He feels like he's compromised a lot. And you can tell the guy just has too many reservations. The guy, it, there's always a but. There's always, oh yeah, I believe, I believe. <laughs> I believe Chelsea is the woman for me, but <laughs> but <laughs> I just feel like I'm compromising. <laughs> he, that guy, my man here yeah, sounds like the stereotype of a black man trying to talk white. <laughs> you know, anyone's there. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, we, we, we all do it. Literally, the whole black community in the UK, we're the same, bro. We'll be talking on the phone and goes, hello, sir. Please may I inquire? <laughs> Rather than be like, oh, see, I'll call the man, they're like, yo, why go on? What are you telling me, bro? You know, no one's there, but anyway. Bliss and Michael have a conversation and they actually kind of bitch about Irina. She, Bliss hates Irina, like literally despises her. And Michael basically says, explains the story and explains the situation that she tried it with um, Paul, etc., etc. And she just says, ultimately, if 30 people feel the same way about you, then you, you might have to start looking at yourself and start looking internally, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I, I'd like to see Irina come back, to be honest, for a little bit of drama. But anyway, Marshmallow's talking to Brett and he explains that Jackie wants that toxic love and she's very self-sabotaging. So he knows that, he recognises that. And Brett basically says, you know, that's never going to be you. And he knows that, you know, Marshmallow knows that it's never going to be him. And But Brett's just being the good friend stuff and they're just being boys and that. And Jackie basically arrives. She arrives. And 
I like Marshmallow, innit? I really do, but why does he have to force the good guy act all the time? He's like, oh yeah, let me put your, let, let me put like my jacket around you, babe. And she's like, no, it's gonna ruin my outfit. He's like, no, 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 you're not, you're not gonna catch a cold. Let me put the jacket. He's forcing the jacket on her. She's like, no, my hair, babe. Um, if she doesn't, if she doesn't want the jacket, stop forcing a jacket on her. Like, it was, it's weird. It's a weird, it, it's a very weird encounter. I know he's a good guy in that, but bro, if the girl don't want the jacket, then fuck off, isn't it? Josh is a drunken mess. Josh is sloppy. He's one of those, he's one of them ones, yeah, where he's a little bit insecure and for, for Dutch courage, he was drunk before when he came in. He, he had been drinking beforehand. So for, for Dutch courage, he has to, he was taking the shots, doing the tequila shots and he was slurring and sloppy. And yeah, I, I don't really get the, the guys. I think the guy's bookie, man. The guy's a weird guy, man. And I'm going to give him donut of the day, yeah, because the guy is literally a snake. The guy is a serpent, slivering, yeah? The saw in hat would have put that motherfucker in slivering because here he is, yeah, sloppy, all over a uh, marshmallow. <laughs> all that, you know, no one's there, like, <laughs> I love you, bro, you know, all this stuff, all this fake love, all this, I thought, bro, he's like a girl, bro, and it's no offense to the women, but that's, that's like school children, that's like school girls. Uh, you know, like women, women, yeah, a prime, they even happened in Love is Blind. Two girls that didn't like each other. The first thing they said was, oh, I, lo I, love, you, I love your outfit. I think it was Chelsea and Micah. And the first thing they said to clear the air was like, like they, they, they didn't like each other. Oh, I love your outfit, babe. Oh, you look like... Girls always do that, then backhanded compliments to girls that they don't really like, yeah? And that, that's, that's exactly what this Josh brother was doing. Oh, yeah, like, I love you, like, don't look at me like that. Like, all this weird drunken antics, yeah? Being all like, I love you, bro, all this stuff, and like, oh, it's Mr. Still Your Girl, and all this stuff, but then like, all, just weird, all this weird stuff, like, giving him, like, kind of love, fake love. And then as soon as he starts talking to Jackie, he starts cussing out Marshmallow. Cussing him to rass, rude boy. Yeah, literally saying, ah, oh. um, he man called him NBA Cryboy. The man actually mugged himself off. He snitched, he snitched on him as well. He said, yeah, he wasn't just crying with you, he was crying with everyone. You know what I'm saying? He did that soppy stuff with everyone. Do you really want to marry this guy? The guy is a snake and it's, it's actually proper wet, it's beta. For you to have to downplay another man here, yeah, for you to uplift yourself to get the girl you want, you ain't no man. I believe Jackie's gonna go for him. I believe she ain't married, she ain't, we all know she ain't married Marshmallow. But I believe she's gonna move on with Josh. And the fact that, if she does that, yeah, that proves she doesn't even know what, what type of man does she really want? The guy's moist. God forbid a man like Josh took my gal. It would never happen in a, in a, in a month for Sundays would that happen. In a, never in a million years could Josh take my gal. But wow, like, I mean, shocking stuff, shocking stuff. Now, Michael and Kwame speak. I'm gonna skip through this because it Kwame is a he's a bitch man. He's just a bitch. He's a he's a proper bitch man. He's like, oh he asked her if she made the right choice and she said I'm unsure but hopeful. And she she asked him like why why do you wanna know in it? Are you still having doubt are you having doubts type thing? And he's just kinda like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he and then again to the camera. He just loves this girl. Like he's just like, yeah, Michael will always have a special place in my heart and all this stuff. Like, Fam, why? <laughs> why? I don't I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. He's got so many doubts. Just let it go. Let Chelsea down gently so she can move on and throw herself into another relationship in the hope of having marriage and kids. You know what I'm saying? Just let the girl free the girl because the girl, she's desperate for this life. So anyway, yeah, Marsh, yeah, Josh and Marsh, I've already spoken about that. After that whole weird interaction, I literally wrote down here, Marsh is thinking, what the fuck? And then five seconds later, he goes, what the fuck was that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then Jackie, then Jackie and Josh speak, and he, I said this again, he's a snake, absolute snake. And she just, she explains to him, listen, you didn't even really tell me, yeah, we got on in the pods, but you didn't really open up. You didn't really, yeah, we had a connection, but you didn't really, we didn't really talk about our emotions, things like that. And he's, so it's, it is weird to see how he's literally, it, he says he's in love with the girl. How? How are you in love with Jackie? I just don't get it. How are you in love with someone after two weeks? Uh, uh, whatever, man, whatever. And the episode ends with, him asking her the question, are you really gonna marry him? Are you gonna go forward with it? And obviously that hesitancy, that silence means hell no. It's not, of course it's not, it's not, it's not gonna work, is it? For one, that, them two together for life. Now the preview looks interesting. Bliss's parents weren't excited for her. It looked like Paul was nearly getting cold feet and Shelby was in the audience as well. I don't know why that Shelby bitch is getting airtime. That, that girl's, just, get her off my screen, bro. Honestly, she came across like a real nasty girl on TV. That like, she, she didn't come across like a good friend. She came across like a bitch, genuinely. Anyway guys, let me know your thoughts. What the hell do I know, man? I'm just a man in his 20s. Peace.